Hey guys, welcome to Puddin's Kitchen. My name is Toyin. Today we're gonna to be making a Puddin style cast iron steak. Super easy, amazing, amazing flavor. Today we're gonna to be working with some ribeye steaks. If you've never had a ribeye steak before or if you're struggling to cook steak, the most important thing is to look for marbleization. You wanna see that there's some fat marbleized in between the meat. So it's not just complete red, you've got some white fat in there. And the reason why is because when that cooks, the fat starts to melt into the meat and it makes it very juicy. And even if you want it medium well, it'll still be nice and juicy. So look for a lot of marbleization in your meat. And also spring for a grass-fed beef. If you can do it, do it. Like it just tastes a million times better. It's better for you as well. So today what we got here is a, two ribeye steaks. We're also going to add some rosemary, some uh, portobello, baby portobello mushrooms. You can use white mushrooms as well. It's not a big deal. We've got about a half an onion, a half of a small onion. We have some um, peppers. You know I like everything spicy, so I'm always gonna add peppers to everything. Please omit if you do not like spicy. It's not necessary at all. Um, I've got about a quarter cup of red wine right here, a little bit of um, light olive oil, or you can use a vegetable oil, and some salt here. I also roasted some garlic right here. Um, garlic, Roasted garlic is a way to punch up flavor in any dish, so all you have to do is take a whole clove of garlic, cut it in half, douse it with a whole bunch of oil, wrap it in foil, and put it into your oven on about 450, 475 for about 30 minutes, not even 30 minutes. Once you start to smell that really strong garlic smell, go ahead and take it out. Your garlic will ooze out, and you have nice garlic, roasted garlic that you can use for basically anything, and it adds a lot of flavor to everything. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our oil, and we're just going to brush it if you don't have a brush you don't have to use a brush you can just totally use your hands um, and we're going to brush both of these on both sides with our oil you want to make sure that you don't use an oil that has a low smoke point meaning that it's an oil that burns fast because if that happens then you know you're going to the the oil the burnt oil flavor is going to get into your meat and you don't want that so use something like um a vegetable oil or anything that has a high smoke point all right, now as you notice, we're not putting any black pepper on our steak just yet. We're just gonna put some salt on this. And the reason why is because we also don't wanna burn our black pepper. Our black pepper has a nice flavor and we can put that on right after we are done um, searing this steak. So we're gonna flip that over again on both sides and kind of be pretty generous with the salt. If you're on a low sodium diet, dial back the salt for sure, all right? All right, guys. So that's it. We are gonna put the. We're gonna get our skillet hot, and we're using a cast iron skillet. We're gonna get our skillet hot, and then we're gonna put these steaks on a really nice hot skillet and get it going. And then we're gonna throw in our vegetables later. I'll see you over at the stove. All right, guys. So here we are. We have seasoned our steaks with oil and salt. And as soon as you get those steaks salted, you wanna you wanna put those into your hot pan as soon as possible because what's gonna happen is all the moisture is gonna draw from those steaks and all that moisture that you wanna keep into the steaks to keep them nice and juicy is going to come out. So that's what salt does, right? So you're gonna to want to get those into the pan as soon as possible. So also look for, when you're heating your pan, make sure that you have the olive oil, whatever, or you know, light oil in there, whatever kind of oil you wanna use that has a higher smoke point. You wanna make sure that you have that pan on very high, and you wanna see a little bit of a white smoke rising from your pan before you add your steaks into the pan. The reason being is you want this pan as hot as it possibly can get so that you create a nice crust on your steak so that all of those juices stay inside of your steak. So right now, I see a little bit of a smoke going on. If my alarm goes off, guys, my, um, my fire alarm, just, you know, bear with me here, okay? So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off some of this rosemary, like I said, and put that in here. Give it some flavor, flavor up our oil. And then I'm gonna put my peppers on the side here as well. And we're just going to put our steaks into the pan. And like I said, I know the herbs is to definitely check those steaks right now and see what's going on. 
but we're just gonna let those cook about two minutes. This one, this steak right here is about an inch, so it's about two to, I would say more around three minutes. This one is looking more like about a half an inch, so about two minutes for that one. And we're just gonna let that grill really nicely on one side, get those beautiful grill marks, and hold in all that moisture, and then we are going to flip them over. All right, guys, so we're ready to check this steak here. It's been a couple minutes. Ooh, wow, we've got a nice crust there. We're gonna go ahead and flip it, that's perfect. Oh my goodness, wonderful. Now you want that nice crust because like I said, look how we don't have much in the way of sauce. That means that we've really retained all of the moisture inside of the steak. Very important for a nice juicy steak. Let's see what's going on here. Look at that fire, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. A little bit of action inside of the home kitchen. Flip over your peppers as well if you're following my style, my spicy style. If not, flip over whatever vegetables you got going on in here. All right? And then we're going to give that another, I would say, a minute and a half or so. And then we're going to take those off and let them rest. All right, guys. So we took our steaks off. We were very patient and we waited our good two to three minutes so we can make sure that we got a nice crust on our steak so that all of our juices could be retained. Now, I know that the temptation is to cut into that steak as soon as it's off of the skillet, but you're gonna wanna let that rest. So here's something to do in that time while it's resting. Go ahead and make yourself a nice pan sauce. Now you have a little bit of drippings from the steak in your pan already. So you don't wanna use a new pan. You wanna use the exact same pan. You're gonna take those onions that we talked about earlier and you're just gonna put those into the pan. Also those mushrooms. If you need a little bit extra oil, you can go ahead and add that as well. All right, drizzle that in, not too much, just a little bit. You're gonna wanna add some salt to give it some flavor. Although there was some salt already inside of the, or on top of the steak, you might wanna add a little bit of salt just to add a little bit more flavor. But what's gonna happen here is your onions and your mushrooms are gonna pick up all the flavor that's left behind from that steak and it's gonna add like, make a nice, really, really nice hand sauce for your steak. And really at this point, I think the most important thing here is using onions. Onions are amazing and they are the foundation to really any good meal. Like I, I put them in everything. So if you don't like onions, I'm so sorry for you. Onions are amazing, they're really in everything and they make everything taste better. So we're just gonna move these around. We still have a little bit of our rosemary in here too and that's picking that up. Let that cook down for a while. I'm gonna turn this all the way up. Cause this is a fast meal. This is something that you wanna eat quickly. It's not something that you wanna be cooking for hours. So it's just kind of like throw it in the pan, throw your steaks in the pan on a really high heat, throw your vegetables in the pan right after that. And as soon as everything is nice and tender, then food is ready, dinner's ready to go. All right, we're gonna keep on moving this around. And once I feel like the vegetables are slightly soft, I'm gonna add some red wine. So if you're sipping on a glass of red wine while you're making this steak, literally just pour the other half of that glass into this pan and you've got a really amazing mushroom pan sauce from your steak. And it makes you feel fancy, because whenever you're cooking with wine, I don't know about you, but I definitely feel fancier. So, I like cooking with wine. And it gives me a reason to have a glass of wine while I'm drinking, while I'm, while I'm drinking, while I'm cooking. <laughs> All right, so look at our vegetables. They're beautiful, they're brown, they're cooking down very quickly. And this is the fun part. So we're gonna add some red wine. And it should sizzle, it should get a lot of heat. And what happens here is that liquid picks up all of the little bits of meat and flavor that are on your pan. So you just wanna move it around as much as possible, add a little bit of salt as needed.
This is also a great time to add a little bit of butter. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna get out of my shot a little bit, but reach for the butter. gonna cut in about a tablespoon of butter right at the end and it makes it taste amazing guys this is that Ruth Chris flavor that everybody wants you guys think that it's so amazing what they're doing it's just butter that's all it is butter makes everything better all right so now we have our beautiful pan sauce I am going to plate this up for you guys and give it a try so you guys will see my reaction to it but I already know it's gonna be good. Hey guys, so we're finished with Puddin's classic st skillet style um, ribeye steak. So I'm just gonna give this a taste now. So as you can see, this is a nice crusty outer layer and that holds in a lot of the moisture. Like I said, you're going to wanna wait until you cut this steak, um, until it rests like a few minutes because you don't want all the juices to run out. But I'm gonna give this so amazingly moist. I'm gonna give this a try right now. And we did a medium steak, so it's about 145 um, is the temperature there. I'm gonna try it with some of this mixture here, this topping. I added the roasted garlic to it as well. All right. Mm. That steak is outstanding, guys. It's completely juicy. All of the juices have been retained in the steak, which is amazing. The flavor is simple, but great. Like I said, definitely use a grass-fed steak. It makes all of the difference. And pop that butter into that sauce at the last minute to give it that creamy Ruth Chris um, Morton Steakhouse flavor. Um, and also use the roasted garlic if you can. Like I said, if you want a little bit of spice, you're gonna wanna add a little bit of these hot peppers to it. But this is so good, I'm probably gonna have to leave y'all right now, so.